like lesions, are formed by the quarks. And the quark theory and uh, the standard theory now, now is a governing theory which, which is describing all, all the variety of, of uh, the phenomena in our surrounding physical world. Well, let's come to neutrons. Neutrons as a nucleon formed by free quarks came into action approximately at one microsecond after the Big Bang. When temperature drops down or below 10 to 8 Kelvin, and when the nucleus, nucleus uh, become stable. The protons and neutrons become stable at that moment, and the era of uh, nuclear interaction, nuclear interactions have been started at that time. At that period of time, 20 minutes after the Big Bang, the primordial nuclear synthesis happened. And during these 20 minutes, the lightest elements of our universe were, were formed. Uh, these elements are hydrogen and helium and helium-3 and small amount of lithium cell also was formed during the period. And up to now, the parameters of the neutron beta decay, the parameters uh, and the, the properties of the neutron as elementary particles are still giving us hints to the understanding of this period of primordial nuclear synthesis and tenure of the organism. Now, so the neutron lifetime and other parameters are the keys to the, to the uh, processes which happened uh, almost 14 billion years ago during the, uh, during the Big Bang. At that moment, after these billions of years, neutrons are the governing force in the stellar nuclear synthesis through uh, so-called R and S processes, rapid and slow processes. R and S space for rapid and slow processes. A different kind of nuclear reactions uh, which are governed by, by neutrons in, in, the, in the course of modern stars. And these processes are responsible for the production of the elements in modern universe. These elements, after explosions of the supernovas and kilonovas and other kind of, of, of explosions, are, are explosions. So these elements are distributed across the universe, and uh, these elements are the sources, the material for, for, for the formation of new planetary systems like our solar system. Coming back, coming, coming closer to the Earth and to our uh, uh, ordinary life, neutrons are driving forces in the nuclear power plants, which are producing approximately 20, 25 percent of the total electricity on the Earth produced by, by the human kind. And also, neutrons are the driving force in the nuclear weapons, uh, which uh, have been developed in. In the, in the 50s of, of the last century, 40s of the last century, and plays very important role in the modern, in the modern life of, of, of the human kind. So neutrons are everywhere, and uh, they are very important, and we are lucky that we can we are able and we have such a laboratory in, in, the, in the structure of the Joint Institute, which uh, helps us to, to work with. Uh, wherever we can work with neutrons. Neutrons are not very easy particles to work with uh, because of this obstacle, which now you see on the slide. This is a model of the atom, as we uh, have seen from the textbook at school and in the university. And uh, at the beginning, this picture was incorrect. But most probably, most frequently, you see, have seen this picture in this, in this, in this uh, form: the big nuclear in the center and electron orbits around. But it's not correct because of dimensions. The dimensions are shown here. The electron orbitals, the electron orbits are approximately 10 to minus 8, 10 to minus 9 centimeters, and the nuclear size 
is on the level of 10 to minus 12, 10 to minus 13 centimeters. So the difference is four, five orders of magnitude. And now the picture is correct. Uh, the mass of the atom, 99.9% .9 of the mass of the atom is concentrated in the nuclei. And nuclei is a very small object situated in the center of this picture. And namely, the nuclear is an object which neutron can interact with. Neutrons are not interacting with electrons, opposite to the charged particles. The charged particles, easy to detect, easy to protect from charged particles because they are interacting with electrons and uh, they are losing energy and uh, they are ionizing atoms, losing the energy and stopping in the matter. Neutrons only can interact with the nuclear. So the cross sections of neutron interaction are much smaller compared to the interaction of, of the charged particles. Uh, neutrons are difficult to, to protect, neutrons are difficult to detect, and, and, and extremely difficult to make a spectroscopy of neutrons, to measure the neutron energy. And this is important, and later I will show you how we are able to, to measure the neutron energy. In our ordinary life, I mean in, in our laboratory, we are using, the, not only in our laboratory, in other laboratories where people are using the neutrons as a tool or using the neutrons as an object for investigation. Now, the physicists are having to uh, deal with neutrons in the very wide energy of the range and the responding wavelengths. Uh, coming to the energy, starting from 10 to minus 7 electron volts to 10 to 7 electron volts, 14 orders of magnitude, starting from nano electron volts to mega electron volts. And here you can see they have the terminology how we are calling these neutrons. So, fast neutrons uh, with energy uh, uh, from 1 mega electron volt to approximately and, and higher from one, one mega electron volt and higher, and they are fast uh, Between one mega electron volt and approximately one electron volt, we call these neutrons as a resonance neutron. Resonance because the cross-section inter inter uh, cross in this energy range are extremely non-monotonic, and at some specific energies we have uh, the increasing of the energies or orders of magnitude. And we have very specific resonance structure of the, of the cross sections in this, in this field. Near to the uh, thermal equilibrium, we have thermal neutrons. The thermal energy corresponds to the energy of the neutron, kinetic energy of the neutron, which is in thermal equilibrium uh, with the matter at normal conditions. That means 300 Kelvin. And corresponding energy is 25 milli electron volt. So this is the thermal energy. Below this energy, we uh, call neutrons as a cold neutrons and ultra cold neutrons. UCM stands for ultra cold neutrons. Uh, fantastic particles. Ultra cold neutrons are a very specific particle because the energy of these neutrons is. Uh, below so-called pseudothermic uh, limited energy, uh, the, uh, which corresponds to hundreds of nanoelectron volts, different for different matters, and uh, this pseudothermic potential forms the energy barrier on the surface of solid body, uh, on, be on the border between the, the matter and, and vacuum, there is a positive uh, potential barrier which prevents neutron from penetration into the matter. This gives you possibility to store such a low energy neutrons in a closed material tracks. So you can imagine the, the basket filled with the neutrons with a cover on top. And such a neutrons, they will store until the, the period of beta decay in, in this trap without any losses. And this is one of the way uh, uh, to measure the neutron lifetime and other parameters of pre neutron beta decay, which is, gives very, very nice results and very precise results uh, compared to other methods. 
Uh, by the way, the alpha cold neutrons were invented, were discovered for the first time in our laboratory, in the laboratory of neutron physics in 1968. It's one of the discoveries which belongs to the physicist from our laboratory. Uh, using the neutrons for the condensed matter research are mainly connected to the, to the usage of neutron scattering methods for, for, for measuring the structure of, of the solid body. And the main methods is a neutron scatter. We have incident beam with some neutron flux density. This beam is formed by a special collimation system. Somewhere here we have the neutron source, we have moderator, which slow down the neutrons from the nuclear reactions to the thermal energy range, to this 25 milli electron volts. And then we have collimation systems, which are forming the parallel beam of the neutrons. These neutrons are coming to the sample. Around the sample, we have a variety of detectors, which are measuring the scattered neutrons, measuring the spatial distribution, energy distribution, and time distribution of the scattered neutrons. We have some detectors of the secondary radiation, uh, which uh, can uh, appear after neutron interaction with the matter. Some nuclear reactions can happen, can happen in, 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 the, in the sample. And the secondary radiation, like uh, secondary neutrons or uh, secondary charged particles, alphas and protons and gammas, and by these sec detectors of secondary radiation, we can measure this and can understand the proper the processes uh, which happen inside the sample and uh, induced by, by neutron radiation. Some uh, portion of the neutrons can transmit through the sample without any interaction. And to understand the, uh, the overall balance of the, of, the, of the neutrons and to understand all the parameters of the reactions that happen in the sample, we have to measure the transmitted beam also. So, the idea of the spectrum experiment is to deliver to the sample as the maximum flux of the neutrons and to build the neutron detectors to cover the as higher solid, as, as large solid angle as possible, uh, surrounding the sample and measuring the secondary scattered neutrons and transmitted neutrons and secondary radiation. And from the parameters of <coughs> this secondary radiation, we can calculate the scattering cross-section, uh, the integral scattering cross-section, differential scattering cross-section, and double differential scattering cross-section uh, in, in, in a specific energy range and specific solid angle. And the main task from measuring all these parameters, the main task is to determine the distribution of the scattering centers inside the sample. And scattering center, centers for neutrons are the nuclei of the, of the elements uh, forming this, this specific sample. So the neutron scattering methods are used to determine the atomic structure of the elements inside the sample. But neutron has the magnetic moment. So neutron is also sensitive to the distribution, not only the centers of, of, of nuclear forces, but also to the center of, of, <coughs> of magnetic domain. And by, by uh, neutron scattering, you can measure the distribution of the magnetic, atomic magnetic moment and the main magnetic moment. So neutrons are very effective too. Uh, to measure not only atomic structure, to determine not only atomic structure, but also magnetic structure of the center. And this is one of the main differences between neutrons and X-rays, for example, which also are uh, used uh, to, to study the, the, the atomic structure of materials. Neutrons, opposite to the, to the X-rays, give us possibility to measure the magnetic structure of, of the material. So this is an uh, illustration of the non-monotonic behavior of all the scattering uh, cross-sections and all scattering uh, uh, parameters of the neutrons, both in condensed matter, this is a diffraction pattern 
uh, neutron scatter it at different energies corresponding different wavelengths, uh, the intensity of these scattered neutrons uh, will rise uh, in many orders of, of magnitude if you will subtract the background. And the position of these uh, diffraction peaks and the area under these diffraction peaks give us uh, the possibility to uh, reconstruct, uh, to, to decipher the structure of, of the crystal, the crystal structure of the of this specific material uh, which is under investigation. In, in this specific case, this is a complicated crystal made of rare earth elements and uh, manganese oxide at different concentrations. If you are coming to the nuclear physics, again, the neutron interaction cross sections uh, with, the, with different elements and different isotopes, also non monotonic. And this is an example of um, uh, nu neutron capture cross section for the nature of gadolinium. Nature of gadolinium consists of several isotopes. You see the list of isotopes here and corresponding uh, percentage in, in, in the natural mixture of, 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 the, of these isotopes. And you see at the energy range of 25 electron volts, we have almost 10 strong resonances uh, which belongs to different isotopes of gadolinium. And if you will subtract again the background, the cross section in the peak in the in the center of the resonance, and in between the resonances are differ for orders of magnitude. And the position, and again, the position of the resonance and area under the resonance give us information about the excited states of the nuclei which are responsible for this resonance. And studying this, this structure you know, give us possibility to study the, the, the properties of, of this excited state of the nuclear and give us uh, information uh, which helps in, in the field of nuclear. How to measure this neutron energy? How can we measure this, this, this experimental feature? Uh, in order to do that, we have to be able to measure the neutron energy the neutrons which are interacting with our sample. We have to know not only the overall neutron flux density, but we also have to measure the time distribution of the scattered neutrons and transmitted neutrons and time distribution of the, of the secondary uh, radiation around the sample. The only precise and effective methods to do that is the neutron type of flight method the measuring neutron spectroscopy by means of time of flight. How this method works? We have the neutron source, which is operated not in steady state mode, but in pulse mode. Neutrons are emitted with a very short pulses, with a, with, with a time uh, duration equal to dt. The sample is positioned in between the neutron source and the detection, the distance from the source to the detector, we are able to measure by line or by, by laser line, by any tool. And we know this uh, <coughs> distance precisely, and this distance we are calling flight path. Our detector is able not only to measure the, the neutron, not only uh, is able to, to, to detect uh, the, the, the fact that neutron arrived to the detector, but also can measure the time of arriving of neutrons to the detector. And the methods of measurement the neutron energy is the following. You have the time, uh, you have the clock which is started by the neutron pulse, and the, you have the clock with the multiple stops, and the stop is forced by the uh, neutron detector. And your detector is measuring the arrival time of every neutron after the source pulse for each specific pulse. And we are measuring the time spectra of neutron arrival to the, to the, to the source. And when you measure the, the, the arrival time, you immediately can, can, can calculate the neutron velocity just by dividing the flight path 
over the flight time. And this uh, simple equation gives you a uh, connection between the neutron energy expressed in the electron ball and flight path expressed in meters and flight time expressed in microseconds. So neutron energy in the electron world is approximately the, uh, the numerical coefficient, which is equal to 5,237, multiplied by flight path divided over flight time in meters and microseconds corresponding in square. The precision of of neutron of measurement of the neutron energy, the the, the uh, precision of the neutron of the neutron energy measurement, relative precision is expressed here, and you see the wider is uh, the neutron pulse, the worse is your energy resolution. And from this equation, you see the the methods how to improve. We can improve the energy resolution. You can increase the flight path. In this case, both L and time of flight will increase, and the energy resolution becomes better. And this method really works, but you cannot uh, implement these methods uh, in a very wide uh, range because as far you are staying from the source, the less intensity of the neutrons you have. And this intensity loss is quadratic from a distance. Increasing distance twice, you are losing intensity four times. Increasing distance ten times and improving corresponding to the energy resolution, you are losing the intensity, you are losing the statistic, two orders of magnitude. So at some distance from the source, you will not see any neutrons from the source, you will see only background neutrons from the cosmic events and from nature of reactivity and so on. So in order to use all the all, all the all the advantages of the neutron time of life, you should have the as short pass pulse as possible and you should have the intensity as high as possible. And we are trying to build such a neutron sources with the short pulses and with the big uh, intensity of, of the neutrons in, in every single pulse and with a with a high repetition rate of these pulses to get the overall statistics of the neutrons. The history of the development of neutron sources in the laboratory and in the GNR uh, started at the very beginning of the institute in the 50s of the last century. In 1956 uh, the institute was formed and from the very beginning, by initiative of the first director of the Institute, Dmitry Blachinsev, the Laboratory of Neutron Physics was established. And Blachinsev was the initiator of construction of the first pulsed reactor. It's shown on this photo in the center of the slide, on the very top of the slide in the center, the photo of the first reactor. And Blachinsev invited Ilya Foran, uh, at that moment he was not a Nobel Prize winner yet, but in 1958, Ilya Frank got the Nobel Prize for explanation of the theory of the theory of radiation nature. And Ilya Frank, in its order, invited Fyodor Shapira as a deputy director of the laboratory. And these three persons, they have determined the, the, the future of the laboratory for the, for the long, long, long time. Up to now, we are still working with some ideas uh, initiated and, and expressed for the first time by these three people. And we have the dedicated, uh, the dedicated grants named after Ilya Frank and Fyodor Shapira in our laboratory and young scientists in our laboratory. We have uh, five grants uh, named by Ilya Frank and three grants named by Fyodor Shapira. Uh, these grants are uh, annual grants, and every year we have the, the competition between young scientists and our laboratory in, in, uh, for, for, for these grants. And we have set of different neutron sources uh, started from the very first reactor, which was built after ideas of, uh, of uh, Dmitry Blachinsev. He expressed this idea in 1955 one year before the institute was formed, 
1956, during the period of formation of the Joint Nuclear Research, these two bright scientists, Yaman Darenka and Yuri Stavinsky, they developed the theory of this pulse reactor. In 1956, the construction of this reactor had been started. And in June 1960, this reactor was get the cross criticality was put into operation. This was a very powerful machine. Uh, the average power of this reactor was only one kilowatt. You, hear, you see here the, the list from, from the logbook of, of the, from the reactor control room. The first criticality was reached at the power of 30 watts. And the average power during routine operation was only one kilowatt. But this one kilowatt average power corresponds to the reactor with a steady state power of approximately five megawatts, because the neutron flux density during the peak was several orders of magnitude higher corresponding to the average. And namely, this peak neutron flux density was used for the experiments. And namely, this uh, past uh, characteristics of the neutron radiation gave us the possibility to measure effectively the neutron energy to make the spectroscopy of the neutron. So the uh, past neutron sources are very effective tools uh, to implement different uh, kind of neutron scattering uh, techniques to study the condensed matter and to study the, 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 the nuclear theory. Since that period, uh, we have uh, different uh, uh, options of these past reactors realized in our institute. In the middle of the 60s, Vahintsev uh, uh, and the team from the laboratory, together with a specialist from Bolivar Research and Development Institute of Power Engineering of Soviet Union at that moment, and later Russian Federation, they have started development of the reactor not in kilowatt range, but in, in a megawatt range. And at that moment, we have reactor IBR2 as our main basic facilities. This reactor was modernized in years 27, 2010, within four years. And this reactor now is a flagship facility of the GNR for the researches in the field of, of neutron physics. Uh, the scheme of the reactor uh, slightly different from the very first reactors. But the main principle still exists. This is the principle of mechanical modulation of the reactor. This reactor is operating in the pulse mode due to existence of these two <laughs> mechanical tools, these two blades which are rotating near to the reactor core. Uh, with a rotation of frequencies equal to 600 rotations per minute and 300 rotations per minute. Five times per second, these blades are coinciding opposite to the reactor core right now. And during this uh, continent, very small fraction of the fast neutrons which are trying to escape from the core are reflecting from these blades, returning back and uh, making the whole system supercritical. And uh, we have the exponential increasing of the fissions in the reactor core, and we have exponential increasing of the of the neutrons, neutron flux, uh, 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 neutrons emitting from the surface of the reactor. We have producing of this extremely powerful neutron pulse from our reactor. And the advantages of the pulsed uh, reactors, you can easily understand from this number, top numbers in this table. Average power, two megawatts, but burst power, which corresponds to the neutron uh, uh, pulse maximum, is almost two gigawatt, 1,850 megawatt. This is the power of two blocks of atomic power station. You can easily understand and imagine how big are these two blocks of atomic power station. The dimensions, meters by meters, many cubic meters, and the uh, amount of the nuclear fuel inside, the hundreds of tons, 
and we have the same power compressed into the volume of 22 liters, flashing five times per second. And it gives us extremely high intensity of the neutrons on the surface of, of, the, of, the, of the reactor core. And this intensity is 10 to 16 neutrons per centimeter square per second. If you will look onto the facilities, on, on research facilities which are utilizing the uh, extracted neutron beams for the research in the world, our reactor IBR2 before modernization and after modernization, after modernization is in line with the most intense neutron facilities in the world. Some of these facilities are still under construction, like this European scattering, uh, uh, scattering European spallation source, which is now under construction in Moon, uh, Sweden. Our neutron source is one of the best neutron sources, one of the three, five uh, best neutron sources in the world. Around the reactor, we have approximately 20 instruments, which are utilizing the pulse neutron flux uh, traveling from the reactor core through the neutron guides to the position of the sample and is detected by the detectors which are surrounding the sample. Most of these instruments are dedicated to the neutron scattering uh, research, but some of them are used for the nuclear physics, like this instrument and this instrument on the number 11. Uh, also, we have the uh, neutron activation analysis facility Rigata, uh, which is situated under the reactor and uh, using the rabbit system, pneumatic transport system, for irradiation of the samples and <coughs> transporting them to the, to the uh, measurement position. Uh, the majority of the research in the field of, of uh, neutron scattering are dedicated to determination of the atomic structure and magnetic structure. And we have eight diffractometers around our reactor, including the unique diffractometers with uh, very good parameters. You see here the uh, uh, Fourier uh, diffractometer of high resolution, which gives us possibility to measure the interatomic interplanar distances in the, in the crystallic the structure of the materials uh, with uh, precision of 10 to minus 1%, open 1%. You see that delta D over D is equal to 10 to minus 2. Uh, uh, very unique instruments uh, like the diffractometers for high pressure research at the at 12 beam and beam, and beam number 6 of IDR3 are dedicated to the study of the materials under extreme conditions. First of all, under high pressures. And we are, have, now we have the possibility to measure uh, the phase transition and other properties of, of the materials under pressures up to several tens gigapascal, which corresponds to hundreds of kilobars uh, pressure. And our goal, ambitious goal, is to come to megabar line of the pressures, to come to the to the to the limit of, to come to the to the <clears throat> value of 100 gigapascal and higher. And it opens uh, very good possibilities to to to, to study uh, high temperature superconductivity, to study the magnetic properties of different materials uh, under, under these extreme conditions. It opens uh, very good, uh, it opens very wide variety of, of, of research conditions. Neutrons are able also to measure the surface properties of the materials. When neutrons are scattered at very small angle uh, from, from the surface, they are penetrating into, into the materials at very small depths. And this, this depth of penetration corresponds to tens of nanometers. And again, in this very thin layer, you can study the magnetic and atomic properties of, of, of the material in this surface layer. And this, re, this research are called reflectometry, and we are using these methods uh, very effectively to measure the, the uh, properties of the material uh, by means of this method. 
uh, using so the using uh, the time of flight twice using the secondary time of flight methods, uh, you can measure also the transfer of the energy from the neutron to the molecules and to the atoms of this of the sample ambient distribution. Or you can measure the transfer of uh, of the energy from the molecule or atom to the neutron. So you can study the dynamical properties of the material which is under investigation. And we have two instruments. At that moment, we have two instruments for inelastic neutron scattering at IDR2. And now uh, another instrument is under construction, which, have, which is uh, aimed to replace one of the old instruments at the beam, uh, line number two. After modernization of the reactor in 2011, we have implemented very powerful methods of neutron radiography and tomography. At the beam number 14, we built the facility for neutron imaging. And with this neutron imaging, we can see inside the bulk object without destruction, without opening this object. We can uh, discover the, the, the new internal structure of this object. And uh, uh, with the uh, tomographical uh, methods, uh, we can reconstruct the 3D structure of this object. And this method is effective, very effectively used uh, for archaeological artifacts. For these uh, pieces of the cultural heritage of, of the human titans, uh, we are unable to dissimulate, we are unable to, uh, to cut this, to, 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 to open this object to look inside because they are very valuable and uh, the specialists from uh, the corresponding institutions or museums they do not let us to, to open this object and to, dis to, 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 to distract this object in order to investigate and uh, our tools neutral radiography tomography and other neutral methods give the possibility to look inside and to discover the structure of such an object like is shown here uh, this is an example, the vial, golden vial, the very small one, uh, which have been excavated uh, from, the, from the place near to the Sochi region during preparation for Olympic Games in 2014. And we were able to look inside, we have discovered some organic stuff inside, and all these, all these researches have been done without unsealing this, this object. Uh, during the investigation. And these researches are rising the big interest uh, among the, the international community. Here you see the uh, moment of the visit of uh, the constant secretary of French Academy of Science, Madame Brichignac, and her colleagues uh, to the team number 14, and Sergei Kuchanov, our staff member, is explaining them the results of our research with this new radiography and tomography. So summarizing all this direction, uh, here is a list of different research which we are doing uh, by means of neutron scattering. More or less fundamental research uh, in the field of nanoscale physics and physics and chemistry of functional materials and liquids and polymers and soft condensed matter, the biological research. And also engineering applications like a structural characterization of functional materials and non-destructive control of residual stresses and, and strains in, in the materials and texture analysis of uh, geological materials and construction of materials at our reactor. And this is an example, again, examples of this research, but I will skip uh, in order to be able to tell you about another directions of the research, namely the nuclear field. Uh, but one short stop. Uh, again, I remind you that uh, at IBR2, we have uh, the user policy implemented, and majority of the instruments, majority of the instruments are provided for international scientific community for the usage. And since this year, the radioanalytical laboratory, Regatta, the IBR2 facility for neutron incubation analysis also was introduced as a user facility, and we already have the first call for the proposals 
or experiment of this facility. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic situation, uh, all the user policy was frozen during this year. Uh, we, uh, we we hope we hope for and we are praying for uh, the situation to start will become better in, in the next year, and we will be able to accept. Uh, the external users from other countries and from Russian Federation for, for experiments at IDRT. Uh, so, we have two calls a year collecting the proposals. And uh, these proposals are evaluated by the international expert community and they are getting some uh, marks, some evaluation. Uh, uh, marks for, for, for the quality of these proposals. And the proposals with the highest evaluation are uh, getting the beam time at the, at the requested instruments. And we are providing the uh, financial support for the users from the member country for this experiment. That means we are providing, <coughs> we, we are paying the local expenses. And that means the hotel accommodation and third day of money for the users from member countries of the institute for the period of the experiment and plus two days, one year, one day before and one year after the experiment. Uh, for the users from the non-member countries, they do not get the financial support from us, but we are not charging them for the beam time. Uh, what is what is uh, important? We are not charging any user, both from member countries and from non-member countries. We are not charging for the usage of the instruments and the beam time at our level. Here is this uh, the, the statistic for the visitors from year 2018 distribution from countries and so on. And, and this slide is comparison of the efficiency of uh, our reactor and uh, the instruments at European nuclear sources. From the data officially published in, this, in these documents and in our annual report, we can deduce that in order to publish one scientific paper, you should spend approximately 16 days at the instrument at average neutron facility at average neutron instruments in Europe. And after 16 days of the of the experiments, you get in the necessary data to publish one one paper. At the IBR2, you need the same amount of time. In 17 days, you are getting sufficient data to publish the paper. Nuclear physics. In the field of nuclear physics, uh, we are continuing the main uh, direction which was established at the formation of the laboratory in the end of the 50s, in the beginning of the 60s of the last century. Investigations of violations of fundamental symmetries in nuclear induced reactions, investigations of the fundamental properties of the neutron and applied and, and uh, methodological research. Uh, we have different uh, possibility to uh, make this research in the field of nuclear physics, but the main uh, activity is concentrated around the source, dedicated source for nuclear physics, iron source, accelerator-based uh, source of the neutrons, the main difference between IRN and IBR2 is the pulse width. At IBR2, the pulse width is 200 microseconds. The IRN pulse width is 100 nanoseconds. Pre ordered shorter pulse width. And this gives us possibility to measure the neutron energy uh, to much higher uh, limit compared to the IBR2. And it gives us possibility to measure the, the, the properties of the excited nuclear, nuclear structure, this resonance structure of the cross sections, which I mentioned in my introductory part of the, of the lecture. And this is an example of measurement, this cross section, uh, uh, resonance cross sections in the, <coughs> in the, in the corresponding energy rate. We are constantly developing the iron facility in order to reach the design parameters. At that moment, this facility is still under development. Now we have the energy of the neutrons up to several tenths mega electron volt, and we have the intensity which very close to the to the designed one. 
And uh, starting from, from the next year, we will start the routine operation of this facility for the research program. Uh, the example of the research in the field of nuclear physics are uh, line uh, are in the very uh, wide uh, range of, of research. The fundamental properties of the neutron reactions, the violations of the fundamental symmetries, symmetries uh, the space, the spatial symmetry and time symmetry uh, in, the, in the field of nuclear fusion, like here, uh, reactions with the fast neutrons using the accelerator-based neutron sources, both at uh, our laboratory and at other laboratories in the world. Uh, and uh, we are using also the CERN accelerator and the dedicated neutron time of flight facility based at CERN, we are operating with them in order to study the, uh, the uh, upper energy range which could be accessed only with this outstanding facility. Uh, uh, and um, this is an example of the publications in, in this field. We are continuing the research in the field of ultra cold neutrons. I told you that ultra cold neutrons were discovered first in our laboratory, and um, up to now we uh, are continue this research in the field of, of, of the cold neutrons. We are using not only uh, the large scale facilities like reactors or accelerator based neutron sources. We are using the, the neutron sources which are table size or laboratory size or table size uh, instruments like <coughs> this neutron generator. On this picture here, you see this a table size device uh, with a weight of several kilos and with a power consumption of several watts, several tens watts maybe. And this uh, is a bright example of the of the of the of the neutron source, which comprises the very compact accelerator of the charged particles, neutrons. These charged particles are accelerated by electrostatic field <coughs> inside this table size facility, and the, uh, to the energy of approximately uh, 100 kilo electron volts, and these neutrons are interacted with a uh, tritons, uh, with a nuclei of super heavy hydrogen, which are located in the, in the target, uh, which is sitting inside it. And due, due to the reaction between neutrons and tritons, we have production of the very fast neutrons <laughs> with energy of approximately 14 mega electron volts and secondary alpha particles. And these two particles are flying in opposite direction and if this accelerator is equipped with a position sensitive detector of alpha particles, and you are able to measure the coordinate of the secondary alpha, and if your target is a point like, you can determine the direction of the neutron emitted in this reaction. And it gives you possibility to measure the spatial distribution of the nuclei which these neutrons are interacting after that. This method was expectedly uh, used uh, for uh, practical units uh, to seek for illicit, uh, illegal trafficking of the drugs and the explosives through the borders and at the border stations and the custom stations. But we are now implementing these methods for nuclear physics. We are using these methods to measure the angular distribution of the secondary gamma rays of non-elastic scattering gamma rays from, from inelastic scattering of the fast neutrons on different nuclei. And this is a Tanga project which is effectively uh, realizing in our laboratory already for several years. We are using our iron facility and resonance structure of the cross sections for such exotic research, uh, like is demonstrated here. We help to our colleagues from Roscosmos Energy of Russian Federation in order to resolve uh, the problem uh, with a with a, <clears throat> a proton missile uh, uh, engines uh, during construction of these engines. 
some mistake in technology was was uh, happened and some wrong kind of material for welding uh, one component of this engine was 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 uh, <clears throat> happened and by uh, in our research a parent facility will help our colleagues to discover and to <coughs> to mark these wrong engines uh, which uh, later was reconstructed uh, very big uh, direction very very strong direction is the researches uh, with neutron activation analysis and with application of neutron activation analysis for uh, the ecology studies by means of most biomonitoring we are able to study the quality of the air we are able to determine the air pollutions uh, from we are able to study the air pollutions uh, from the atmosphere at the specific territory we are participating in in the uh, european uh, most surveys starting from 1995 every five years we are contributing to the atlas of heavy metal depositions uh, which is resulting from these most surveys and these uh, uh, research directions are under continuation also neutron activation analysis help us to understand uh, the ways uh, for purification of the uh, waste, industrial waste arising from the heavy industry uh, by means, uh, by, by usage of, of different bio technique uh, with application of uh, different microbial and algas to, to purify this, this industrial wastewater. At iron facility and at IBR2 facility, we are using the neutron activation analysis in the historical and archaeological studies. A very good set of work uh, from one of our groups is dedicated to the researches of the remnants of, of the, uh, of, of, of the uh, noble persons from the Russian medieval history. We were requested by our colleagues, uh, historians, colleagues studying the history and archaeology, we were asked to measure these remnants of, 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 the, of, the, uh, of, of these noble persons in order to, uh, to understand, to, in order to measure the concentration of arsenicum and mercury uh, in, this, uh, in this remnant. And the results of our research give us an answer that the concentration is extremely high, that most probably these three persons which were under investigation, these remnants from the noble person, they have very good concentration, a very high concentration of both arsenicum and, and, and mercury, that most probably these persons were poisoned. And these are unique results, and some of them are unique and uh, are obtained for the very first time. Um, we are constantly developing the instrumentation around our reactor. Uh, we are constructing new kind of moderators and new kind of the detect detectors in our laboratory. So we are uh, holding the international schools and conferences for young scientists annually. And please look to the informational boards of our <clears throat> laboratory and look for the events, current and approaching events, and you are kindly welcome to come to the laboratory and to uh, take part in our in our events. Sorry, this is uh, second time I'm not telling you about the Newton activation analysis. For the, for the very end, I will just briefly uh, inform you about our cooperation with the Russian Space Research Institute in construction of the instruments, uh, neutron and gamma detectors for the spacecraft. It's very exciting field of the activity. We are participated, uh, participated in the, for, uh, we are cooperating already for more than 20 years. And we have the instruments built with our help, uh, two laboratories of the GNR. Uh, our laboratory and laboratory of radiation bowling. Two laboratories are participating. And we have uh, uh, our instruments operating on Martian orbit, on lunar orbit, on moon orbit. 
in spite of uh, the Russia, do not have successful missions starting from, from the last century. Our instruments are operating on board of American spacecraft and European spacecraft. And uh, in cooperation with our colleagues from other countries, we are able to, <coughs> to send the in Russian instruments to, to the missions to other planets, including the instrument which is now working on board of the Curiosity rover on the Martian surface in the Gale crater. Here, inside on this instrument, we have the neutron generator, as, as I showed you before, this neutron generator and block of neutron detectors, which were developed with our help, and these uh, are working uh, successfully. In our institute, we have prepared the special stand for the research of this instrumentation for the spacecraft. And here, at this stand, we have the model of the planetary surface, and on this model, we are testing different kinds of the neutron and gamma detectors uh, dedicated for future missions. Uh, uh, the large piece of activity of our laboratory now is dedicated to the design and construction of the new neutron source. Our IBR2 reactor, after modernization, have scheduled lifetime until 30th of this century. But 30th of this century are coming in 20 years from now, approximately, even, even earlier. And the period of construction of the large scale facilities is a, is a large, is a, is a long one. So now is the time for starting the construction of the new source. And we are, have started already uh, this activity and we are working uh, with the designers of this facility. And we are now in the stage of designing and uh, constructing this new neutron source of the GNR. And this is another field of the activity uh, where you can apply uh, uh, your ambitions and your abilities and your education. So this is all about our laboratory. Thank you for your attention and I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you very much for the interesting lecture, William Nikolaj. Uh, please, your questions, you can write to the chat or just raise your hand. I don't see right now. I have a, I have a question, actually. Um, the one common question, I guess. Uh, it's concerning the new neutron source in GNR. So, uh, as far as I understand, it would be the new uh, building, right? Yes. So, uh, is it will um, constructed uh, separately from the uh, how to say uh, nowadays Iber Iber two area or at the same area? No, no. It will be it will be different. The different another building at different location um, because the Iber two <laughs> is you see the Iber two is is located. The core of the IBR2 is located at the level of approximately six meters above the ground level on the territory of our uh, of our of our uh, site lab site. Uh, and this is because of nuclear safety. This nuclear safety is uh, uh, is uh, uh, originated from the fact that we have the Moscow Lake, Moscow Sea, near to the Dumna city. And we have the dam, and we have the big amount of water in this in this Moscow lake. Mm -hmm. in, in case of accidental destruction of this dam, the water level on the territory where we are sitting now uh, temporarily will rise about three meters above the ground level. And for the fast reactor, this water flooding is a, a, a pro, totally unacceptable. It will it will cause the, the catastrophic uh, the catastrophic disaster. So the core of the reactor is raised at six meters. Our new source uh, will not uh, behave in the same manner. This is not the requirement for the new source to be located six meters above the ground level. The new source can 
construct on the ground now. And uh, this uh, is this location six meters above uh, is limiting us in, in constructing the flight path, long flight path. Uh, it's very expensive to build the flight passes at, 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 the, at the level of several meters above the ground level. And moreover, the existing reactor building is also will also exhaust the lifetime which is established by the, de the designer because of irradiation of the fast neutrons during the operation of fiber. So the short answers we will have the new building, but also on the territory of, of other site. I see. Thank you. And then what, what about flux of the neutrons? Is it all uh, our goals? Our goals is to have 10 or 10 times higher neutron flux density compared to IBR2 and 10 times higher compared to European spallation source, which is now under construction. So we have very ambitious goal to build the best neutron source in the world. Oh, I see. Okay, then I wish you good luck with the construction of the Thank new. you. Thank you, Ido. Yeah, any questions? So uh, I don't see any. So let's thank speaker again and uh thank you спасибо yeah спасибо большое okay see you later at 2 p.m on the parallel sessions